How do y'all? It's Chris with Shell Fitness, your favorite chair and belt buckle. Today we're going to talk about the three biggest mistakes I see in the corporate gym. Recently I got a membership to Lifetime Fitness, never been before. So now going to Equinox and Lifetime, I'm gathering a lot of data for you guys and I want you to be successful. If you live in San Diego or Los Angeles, check out our internships in person, but we're now online. So you can go online, you can get these classroom demonstrations only exclusive to Patreon, so you're not gonna get that on YouTube. So, first one, we're gonna see too many trainers not being personal. And so our names are personal trainers. Why are we just foam rolling, sitting here like that? Why do we have our clipboard counting out repetitions on a plank? We're not showing the value. So what I'd like for you to see, I'm gonna bring our trainer Max in here. He's gonna do some incline presses. How hard is it to get engaged Spot by the wrist, ask your client, communicate. If he likes the elbows, that's fine. I'm there, good job. Take him out of the comfort zone. Good, let's do two more max. And one, notice how I said his name, and up and hold. Good, I'm gonna take this one from you. I'm taking the weights from my client. Good, get it up there. Hold, hold, don't let me push it in. There you go, resist, resist, resist. Good, don't let me push it out. There you go, nice. And three, Two and one, good job. Use your client's name more. I'm gonna have him come over here and do some goblet squats. So he's doing some squats. He's doing really well. Let's pretend like we're gonna do three more. He has a little bit of valgus. There you go, drive your knee out, drive your knee out. There you go, nice. Getting engaged. Last but not least, super slow on the way down. Good, good chin position. Eyes closed, hold at the top. Hold, 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 hold pushing on him, using some perturbations in here. So we're challenging his body awareness. Nice, and the last one, do an overhead press, single split stance. There we go. And I'm gonna get engaged right here. Push, so his retractors, posterior deltoid, trapezius muscles are gonna get engaged. And thank you, Max, good. So it would be easy for me to have him do those compound movements, core movements, by just sitting back and counting reps. You need to build a relationship with your clients. You need to get engaged. And the four things that I suggest to be successful, if you want to have a solid book of business, 25 plus hours per week, charging the big bucks. One, say your client's name at least three times during the session. Notice how I said his name twice just by doing that. Two, get involved. Whether if it's a squat, a hip thrust, Obviously, you don't want to go to the extreme and a one rep max, have him close his eyes and push him around. No, not talking like that. I'm just, the last exercise, do a drop set, get engaged. Learn something new about your client. Just ask them questions. What do you like to do? Where are you from? It's not that challenging. And last but not least, show them a new exercise. So most of your clients have done a military press before. Have them do a split stance, put their hand out. You are getting engaged. Those are the four things I challenge you to do regularly. The second thing I see a lot of, resting bitch face, resting dick face. Can't tell you how many times I see trainers, arms crossed, sitting in their pocket, on their phone, counting reps. Yeah, so, you know, what's going on? Um, how was your weekend? And okay, so they're sitting down. Okay, yeah, body, body language says so much. The more contagious you are with smiling and getting engaged, people are gonna see you. I was at Lifetime the other day and a client came up to one of our trainers and said, you have good body position. I like the, the way that you're exercising. You have great form. In the conversation, this client said, the trainers here suck. Not a single one of them is nice. Like, as the manager or owner of that location, that would piss me off. That members in that facility are observing your trainers and they suck because their attitude, they're negative. You gotta always be smiling. You're on stage, this is your community. You're walking around, hey, how's it going? You're the mayor of the town. People need to view you as a trustable source when it comes to fitness and you need to put on a great presentation. Show off those pearly whites body language in resting bitch face, resting dick face, take that out of the equation. And if you're a bro, you gotta be smiling at other bros. When I do feel for girls, because typically you're gonna be uh, uh, prayer, not what, what I'm looking for, you're gonna be uh, praying, that's what I'm looking for. You're gonna be praying at the, the gym. 
So you smile at a guy, you got some idiot who now thinks you like him. So I understand for girls, but guys, there's really no excuse. Put work, work on that smile. And last but not least is, I don't know what it is with trainers today, but it seems like every single one of them wants to do some type of Bosa ball, stability ball, foam rolling bullshit where we're over here, oh, okay, make sure that you're unstable and you're really challenging the client by doing this exercise. This is the best thing in the world, oh my God. You know, just stop and stop and pop the Bosa ball. This is bullshit. This is not gonna get your clients results. You need to go to the fundamentals of movement. Choose the patterns that your clients like or which you feel most com com comfortable in teaching. Overload specific adaptation imposed demand. So when you're doing all this circus crap, sure it's challenging for your clients, but you gotta ask the bigger question, is this gonna help them get the results long term? And there's been numerous studies that have shown unstable surface training is inferior when it comes to surface that's uh, level surface training. So if I do a goblet here versus the goblet squat on the BOSU ball, inferior, this is superior. So why are we doing that? And I'm gonna point a finger at you, NASM. You guys love stability. That's the bottom part of your OPT model. We gotta eliminate that. If you want your clients to be successful long term, you need to focus on the patterns and overload them. So those are the three biggest things that you don't fall guilty into those. Make sure that you are getting engaged, that you're not sitting there with the resting bitch face or dick face, and then get away from the stability balls.